Hey guys, so Lord here, back again with another review, and today we'll be taking a look at the McFarland Toys DC Multiverse Blackest Night Necron Megafig. Now before we get into it here, let's first take a look see at both the front and the back of the packaging. So without further ado to you, let's get into it. Now before we get into the meat and taters, of this review, Necron does come with a collectible trading card featuring a heavily photoshopped image of the figure in question. And I know I said I wasn't going to beat around the bush about this earlier in my Black Lantern reviews this week, but there is one particular image of Necron I found on ye old Google Images many, many years ago that's freaking sick, and I do wish it was on this card. That said, that's enough of that because we are done with Black Lanterns after Necron. But as always, there is a bio on the back that you can pause and read at your own leisure. That said, if you haven't been able to figure it out, Necron is the big bad, or as I like to call, the big cajones of the Blackest Night story arc. He is the head of the Black Lantern Corps and is responsible for resurrecting Black Hand, who in turn brought back some members of the Justice League via construct of Batman's skull. And if you watched my Black Lantern Batman video the other day, you know that he too also created some other Black Lanterns via Black Lantern rings he vomited from his mouth. I never said this wasn't weird, okay? That said, Necron also comes with the trademark McFarlane Toys Hockey Puck display stand, which we're used to seeing in Slime. You may want to use this, um... I don't have trouble standing my Necron, particularly because the ankle joints in mine are relatively tight, and uh, I'm able to balance him for the most part, but if you are having trouble, that stand may come in handy. I think both his feet do fit on it, but worst case scenario, you use two, right? That said, he also comes with, and this is the main reason most people are buying this particular Necron figure, other than the size. Comes with this big, gnarly scythe sickle. I don't know what the proper terminology is. All I know is that I think a scythe has a straighter blade than this, and this is relatively curved. So, that said, it does have a little white uh, paint there to make it look like it is glowing with dark energy, even though I think dark energy should be more of like a dark blue or purple, if I'm not mistaken. And then it does have some paint on the handle here. Uh, with these little prickers, which, be careful with these, these can be sharp. Ow. And uh, something to note, the scythe, sickle, whatever you want to call it, does come out of the package pretty warped. Uh, I had to straighten this thing out with my almighty heat duck in order to get it this straight. It's still not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was. So, <clears throat> excuse me, taking a closer look at good old Necron here. Yeah. This is hands down my favorite of the Black Lanterns I've taken a look at this week. And I know it's not fair to compare a Mega Figure to a standard release or even a release that comes with a Build-A-Figure piece or an above standard release like a figure maybe like Lobo or the Devastator. You know, ones that are a little bit more on the chunky side. But damn it all if I don't freaking love this figure. This thing looks awesome. That said, I do wish he had the chains because... Um, <laughs> I'm just never satisfied. He is supposed to have some chains hanging off his little neck thing there and off his wrist, and he does not have those. The Mattel Collecting Connect does, and while I do like that, they are a little clean for my taste, so I'm more than likely going to buy some chains from the costume jewelry section at Walmart, and as part of the arts and crafts aisle, and uh, hook this guy up at some point. Uh, shout out to Toy Shiz for that little nugget of customizing information. I do really appreciate that somebody was able to figure out a way to spruce this guy up just a little bit more than he already is because don't get it twisted for 40 bucks I think you're getting what you're paying for here. I think it's well worth it but I do want those chains so that is something I may do at some point. We'll have to wait and see. That said I do also appreciate that they took the time to sculpt the spine in the back, this is something that was absent from the Mattel Collect and Connect figure. Which I do have, by the way. He's actually sitting off screen right now. Uh, awaiting 
the size comparison segment of this video. But he does not have this detail. He just has like the black kind of cloak going across his back here. Robe, whatever you want to call it. And you can see there is a hood that is pulled way down, hanging past his ass. Uh, but I do really like the spinal cord on this guy. I think that's a cool detail. That said, um, I haven't talked about anatomy on any of these Black Lantern guys all week, but his head seems a little big and his neck a little long, but I think that's just the nature of the character design. Uh, so I'm not going to knock him any points for that. I, I think that's fine. It looks fine. Just seems a little bit... Uh, I don't know, it seems a little off to me, but uh, I could just be crazy. That's also a possibility. Of course, you have the black heart in there. Not Marvel's black heart, unfortunately. That'd be kind of sweet if you uh, pulled a Marvel Legends black heart out of his gut there, and he had another figure from another brand, and another company on top of that. But uh, it is just his blackened heart with no paint, but I, isn't Necron dead? Shouldn't his heart be black and not red? I don't know, some people add red to that. I think like a dark gray or blue or purple would make more sense, but I, I don't mind this. This is fine. I do believe the Mattel one has the red in there. The Mattel one also has the silver on the boots. If I'm going to knock this guy for any missing detail, it's the silver boots. I wish he had the silver boots and the silver cuffs around his knees. Um, I know he's sometimes depicted with black boots and knee cuffs, whatever you want to call those, but I think that's just shadowing I don't think that's meant to be that way so it would have been nice to get the silver on the boots but it is a very minor detail his upper half is really what matters here it's where your eyes gonna go because just look at this guy he's freaking awesome look at this head sculpt yeah it might be a little big again I'm not 100% sure on that but it looks intense the Mattel one looked, you know scary but he looked kind of bored this one is like screaming at you to get off his lawn as he's shaking his fist and threatening to chop your head off with a sickle. I love it. It's fantastic. So as far as articulation on this guy goes, he has the double ball peg in the head, which gives you all kinds of crazy range. You can even look up and down a little bit. All due respect to his collar here. And be careful with these, um, <clears throat> excuse me, little link pieces on his collar here. They are soft, so they're not fragile, but they uh, could tear if you're not careful. So be careful with that. And his head can also rotate, so that's fine. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a freaking frog in my throat today, boy. That said, he does have a hinge in the shoulder. That allows it to go out 90 degrees. Back down, forward and back. He's got the ball joint in there. It does shift forward and back a little bit, but you gotta have the arm out to do it, and it doesn't really do a lot, so it's kind of pointless. And there's not even like a rotator cap in there to uh, kind of hide the gap, so it's really nothing. That said, the reason I do know that there is a ball pig in there and not just a straight peg is because I did have to pop this arm off to heat up the bicep to get it to rotate. It's fine now. Um, in fact, it used to get a little stuck before, but after moving it so many times, it's it's pretty solid now. I'm not having any issues with this whatsoever. So, you know, this is a pretty widespread issue with this figure. So when you do get it, carefully remove the arm, heat the top of the shoulder, push down on it and up on the bicep, and try to turn it. As long as you're not kind of tugging on the peg in the inside there, you should be able to get it to crack and move no problem. That said, he does have a double elbow, does work, a little gappy, uh, the Mattel one was not uh, that uh, cut out, and I say that because it has the same type of joint, so it can be done, but you know, you know what to expect from McFarlane at this point. Uh, he does have ball hinge wrists, so you can give him the proper hinge for his grip hand, which is nice, uh, and then he does have an open hand over here. Which I guess you can have him hold a heart. I guess that's something from the uh, comics. Uh, he sometimes holds a heart in that hand. Again, shout out to Toy Shiz for that little nugget of knowledge. That said, as far as his torso is concerned, I think he's got a waist swivel. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. He's got something up in there. He's got like a ball peg, a single ball peg, but you don't get a lot out of it. That said, the hips on him are kind of loose. 
I don't know, they're not terrible, they're not floppy, but I would like them to be a little bit tighter, if possible. Uh, they do kick out, but they don't really, you know, the, the cloak's going to push them back down. I mean, that's just a given. It's super, super thick and dense and not going to really allow you to move much. So I would have liked maybe some soft goods on this guy, but I do like the way this is sculpted and I like the texture of it, so... I guess it is what it is. That said, be careful with the little links on his cuff here, too. They're like the ones on his collar. You don't want to tear those. Uh, that said, he does have a thigh cut. That does work. I think on both sides, really. Yeah, it's fine on both sides. It works. He's got a double knee, which is detented. It does work. I think it's stiffened up over time, but uh, the top one is a little bit more atrocious than the bottom so I have a tendency to bend the bottom knee one click to get him to stand he does lose a little bit of height that way but he stands uh, what do you really care about more and then he of course has the ball jointed ankles that we're used to seeing from McFarlane uh, you know you got your hinge just pretty tight and then he's got the swivel on the top rocker at the bottom peg holes at the bottom of the feet and then toe joints that are well, this one's a little bit looser, but I did have to heat this foot because the ankle on mine was uh, upside down. So I had to heat up the leg and the foot, remove the ankle, flip it around, put it back in there. So that's why my toe joint is probably a little bit looser than the other side. But damn it all, they're tight enough in neutral for me to be satisfied. And look at that. I just plopped him down hard on the ground, and he's standing up just fine. So uh, really awesome figure. What a way to conclude uh, a week of Black Lanterns. I kind of wish I had the Dark Flash to go with these guys, even though he's from a completely different storyline. Uh, speed Metal, if I'm not mistaken, but... Damn it all if I don't really love this figure. This figure is freaking fantastic. If you missed out on the Mattel Collecting Connect Necron, then this is the next best thing. Uh, that said, the Mattel Collecting Connect Necron has gone down significantly in value since this guy's come out because uh, well this one came with the scythe and was way cheaper that said why don't we try and get this in his hand shall we i usually don't try and gear these guys up on camera because i'm a bit of a klutz when it comes to that sort of thing but yeah let do our due diligence here and see if i can't get it in there you gotta kind of have to turn it in there there we go all right got to slide it in there a little more and there it is there he is with his mighty scythe or sickle again I'm not sure what the terminology is I am NOT a farmer by any means I don't even do suburban chores let alone uh, barnyard chores <laughs> so please let me know in the comments if that's a scythe or a sickle I want to say it's a scythe because I believe a sickle is a single handheld kind of tool or weapon, whereas a scythe is a two-handed or staff-like weapon, but I could be wrong. I don't know what I'm talking about at the time. You guys know what you're getting here. So with that being said, let's now move on. Take a look at some size comparisons. First up, here is the Lord of the Unliving next to his old Mattel Collect and Connect counterpart now. Don't get it twisted. I do still really love this new McFarlane Necron, but this old Mattel one does still hold up quite well in comparison. That said, it should also be worth mentioning that this was the very first Collect and Connect slash Build-A-Figure I ever completed in all my years of collecting, so he is very sentimental to me, and I doubt I will ever part with him. That, and like I said before, he still looks really good, just not as good as the McFarlane one in my opinion. That said, we also have the Collect-A-Build Atrocitus who, don't get me wrong, I do like him, but the more I mess with him, the less I seem to like him. So maybe I should just leave him alone from now on, because in all fairness, if he is this big, this new Necron should be like two feet tall. I don't know, I'm just not into Atrocitus being this friggin' tall. Personally, I would prefer him to be somewhere between Batrocitus and the height he is, but at the end of the day... We got what we got, and if you like that, no problem with that. 
Next up, here he is alongside the rest of the Collectibuild Atrocitus Wave. Green Lantern Kyle Rayner, Black Lantern Deathstorm, Black Lantern Superman, and Black Lantern Batman. A nice little set of figures from The Blackest Night, I must say. However, I do feel like we are missing a Hal Jordan and, again, a Black Hand who are core characters from this story arc, and it would be nice to see them at some point in the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line. Maybe in a two-pack. That said, as I mentioned before in the Black Lantern Superman video I did the other day, check that out if you haven't already, would really appreciate it. If you did, I would not be opposed to getting some more Black Lanterns either, particularly Aquaman and The Flash, because I think out of all of the Black Lanterns we haven't gotten yet, those would be the easiest for McFarlane Toys to do because of the reuse. But let me know what other Blackest Night characters you'd like to see in the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line in the comments below. I am very curious to see what you guys have to say about this. And last, but certainly not least, we have our two regulars, the Mythic Legion's Brother Mandibulous, the Love and Spawn, who's not towering over everyone today because he's not a big-ass version of the Grim Reaper, is he? Maybe he was at some point, but not today. So with that being said, time to wrap things up. Some final thoughts. Overall, and as I said before, if you were unfortunate enough to miss out on the Mattel Collect and Connect Necron, then today is your lucky day because this guy right here, last I checked anyways, was still available at most online retailers. Unlike Bane, the other mega figure in this assortment, this guy is relatively easy to get a hold of. That said, of the three Necrons we have, this one, the old Mattel one, and the old DC Direct slash Collectibles one from their Blackest Night line they did several years ago now, which can I just say, I find it ironic that DC Direct slash Collectibles made Necron too short and McFarlane Toys made Atrocitus too tall. I don't know, I think that's funny, but to each their own. At the end of the day though, this of the three Necrons is by far the best one, in my opinion, because while you don't get the chains, and I do miss the chains, you do get the scythe, so there's a trade-off. Uh, the scythe is way less easy to replicate than some chains that you can buy at Walmart for three bucks. That said, you do also need to have the three bucks to buy those, and at this current time, I do not. I am a broke-ass bitch right now, but rest assured, if I do ever have the extra cash, I will give that a try. Again, shout out to Toishes for that nugget of knowledge there. So, with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you are so inclined, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know whenever I upload more reviews like this one. Stay tuned because next week for my Halloween Spooktacular, we have some Masters of the Universe action coming your way. What's it going to be? Well, you're just going to have to stay tuned and find out for yourselves, aren't you? That said, if you've been watching this channel for the past few months, you probably have a good idea of what it is. So I don't think I really need to tell you. But if you haven't already, please hit me up on Instagram at Overlord Productions. But as always, keep the comment civil, because the world sucks enough as it is, especially when you can't afford some $3 chains from Walmart. I mean, how broke is my bitch ass not to be able to afford some $3 chains from Walmart? Seriously? Until next time, I'll catch you guys later.